Do you feel like you're banging your head against the wall trying to find something that will work with your trading? Well, watch at the one Lance B, top PL prop trader in back to back years, reveal the four ways for you to develop profitable trades. Hi, I'm Mike Bellafuri, and we are a long standing proprietary trading firm in New York City with numerous highly successful traders, all of whom started their trading careers with SB. Stay until the end, where Lance dispels common misinformation spread to the trading community. Hi, I'm Lance Breitstein, and today I'm presenting on Developing Trading Edge 201. This is the next level based on a previous video I've already discussed. For that video, trading content and more, you can follow me on Twitter, at the one Lance B. So really it's the ultimate trader struggle. Do you have edge or no edge? Are your strategies working or not working? Are you yourself as a trader able to actually execute and extract money from the market? I know that struggle. I faced two years of uncertainty trying to make it as a trainee. I struggled trying to wonder if I could ever execute on my trainer's proven edges. So this series is for you and it's also requested by you. This is one of the most sought after topics I ever get asked about. So I'm going to help you provide the tools for change. It's going to help you identify whether your strategies have edge. It's also going to help you develop new strategies that also do, in fact, have edge. As a little prereq, I recommend you watch the 101 prereq uh, video I did on this. It kind of touches on what I view as the basic strategies for how you can develop new trading strategies. And I think it all comes back to this wonderful quote by physicist professor Richard Feynman. The first principle is that you must not fool yourself and you are the easiest person to fool. And it really talks about the randomness that we face inherently in markets. This is a probability based game. So how does one really know whether they have edge when it's so hard to tell whether it might just be a trading slump that you're in or maybe the market's changing and how do you change with it? And so to give a little recap, this has been the number one issue of most developing traders, full stop. Most developing traders that are really struggling and both Bella and myself have noticed from kind of the FinTwit universe is people's true issue is that they're not trading strategies with any real edge. They're being fooled by randomness. They're taking their wins as skill and their losses as bad luck. So what really is edge? At its essence, it's just simply having an expected value greater than zero in the long term, meaning that if you play the game or trade long enough, you will make money. So in the previous video, I proposed four basic methods for developing a new strategy. Observation, hypothesis, reverse engineering, and mimicking. I'll dive deeper into those in a separate subject, in a separate video, but this video is really going to address the most common initial question. How do I know if I or my strategies have edge? So it's just so common and it's really one of the most important ones. And sadly, there's actually no easy answer to this. I hate to tell you this. <laughs> I wish I could just immediately look at what you're doing and say, up, oh, you have edge or you don't have edge, but it is deceptively hard and complex to answer. There is no single definitive way to tell whether you have edge or will continue to have edge going forward. And here's why it's so hard. Much like in poker, you can do everything right and still lose. Even with pocket aces or something, in poker you can always lose and you don't know, did I play the hand properly? Should I have done anything different? Should I have folded as the hand changed? So it's really hard to know. What makes markets so hard as well is the inability to practically never know whether you made the right decision or what your true edge was in retrospect. We virtually never know the probability outcomes of a trade. And therefore, even with the price target and a stop, the probability of us winning and the probability of us losing are almost always estimates. Complicating things even further, the market's always adapting as we try to deduce what those actual probabilities are. A corollary of that is it can be so frustratingly hard to know whether the reason for underperformance is you or the market and when you should adapt versus stay the course. The following methods will help you assess, but ultimately, long-term performance is the only true determinant. So one of the first methods we'll discuss is backtesting. The most commonly known method and probably the most commonly employed one is backtesting. And what that is, is to quote Investopedia, it's the general method for seeing how well a strategy or model would have done ex post, or meaning using past data after the fact. So backtesting assesses the viability of a trading strategy by discovering how it will play out using historical data. 
So there's some pros and cons of this. And so as Investopedia says, some of the backtesting pitfalls is that ultimately you're only as good as your data and historical data that you're testing it on. And so really it is harder than it seems because you need to know, does your data have biases? Are you looking at data points that only confirm your views? Are you missing anything? Or are you testing it on data in a market that has already changed? So how does this backtesting work? You look backwards to try to find every instance where your strategy would have applied and calculate the expected value across all those data points. You need to really, really be careful of cherry picking the data. You want to make sure that you're not just including data sets that worked well or ones that stood out, as opposed to including all instances that might otherwise exist. The other important part is you really want to try to find a time period that's analogous to what you're trying to study. For example, if you're testing a bull market momentum strategy, on bear market data, it's really not going to give you what you're really looking for, right? So in markets like 2020 and 2021, when we were really rallying and everything was bullish, you wouldn't want to test that data set against 2021 when we were in a clear bear market. So to give you examples of backtesting, and these are pretty real world ones, you can just still crunch for fun and a lot of quants do stuff exactly like this. Um, everyone's heard of the Santa Claus rally. Uh, what that hypothesis is, is that into year end, kind of is like the little gift from Santa, stocks tend to statistically rally uh, the few weeks heading into the end of the year. Uh, and mostly this tends to apply to the winners. And there are periods of, of stats where you can run this and there, there does seem to be edge. Almost the opposite of the Santa Claus rally is the tax loss selling, where unlike the strong stocks that get bought into year end, all the beaten down stocks that portfolio managers are running at huge unrealized losses uh, on their books, they end up taking those losses to realize them. And that leads to the weakest stocks actually tending to underperform. And so you can look back over 10, 15, 20, 25 years and crunch different data sets for what does the uh, bottom decile of performance, performing stocks do in those final weeks? What does the top decile do? Do those tend to rally versus the um, underperformers tending to sell off further? Another example of this would have been Okay, you missed the broken slot machine of CPI in 21, but now you want to learn how to trade it. So what you do is you get the CPI dates for all of 2021. You look what the market does and you see to yourself like, okay, based on where we were going into the CPI number, um, do the markets tend to statistically trend? Uh, do they tend to uh, go one way or the other? And so that's really what backtesting is, is, is trying to figure out based on historical data, um, is there any edge anywhere? So how to backtest? A lot of professional prop firms like SMB actually arm you with that software. Um, they have special software to really help you identify where you have edge and track it. But there's always the old fashioned way. Um, you can always grab just the old school pen and pencil or paper and pencil or whatever, and get crunching. So one of my favorite stories is one of my trader friends, Greg, who's an independent trader. He started in the late 90s, uh, kind of at the advent of, of a lot of just computing and everything. And there wasn't just common charting software. So what he was doing is he was actually taking a pen and paper. He would mark his entries. He would calculate the prices he would have gotten. And he just did it the old fashioned way. Now you can use Excel, of course. However, if you have programming background or you really want to bring out the heavy guns, there is pro software available. Um, but ultimately, I would just recommend for backtesting, use Google. It's a very common subject, a uh, lot of information available. I'm not really a pro at this, but there are so many resources online uh, showing you how to backtest, giving you examples of people doing their backtests on their strategies. But ultimately, there's a lot of intricacies for how you choose the data sets, what types of statistical analyses you wanna do to make sure it's significant. It really exceeds the scope of this kind of intro video, but it's all out there for you. The next method is forward testing, kind of the opposite um, of back testing. What you do is you run a strategy in real time as a means of collecting data from future occurrences. This is most commonly used when there's not broadly accessible historical data or when past occurrences are not representative or when not enough of them have occurred. So for example, um, it became apparent very quickly in, in 22 that CPI was gonna move markets quite a bit but guess what? In normal markets, CPI doesn't tend to move them. So you can't look back at 2018, 2019, 2020, because it wasn't relevant back then, right? You have no analogous market environment or context to really test this. So what you do is you start collecting data going forward. 
each time you you have your hypotheses and maybe you say like, okay, I think the high beta stocks, um, the tech names, which are most vulnerable to interest rate rises, I think those are gonna be the best movers. And then you collect your data. To dive a little bit deeper on how you do it, a lot of places, a lot of pro firms, again, kind of have software where you can test this in demo mode, you can kind of replicate different scenarios, but also so do a lot of um, just, just retail platforms. I know on TD Ameritrade, their Thinkorswim app, I believe you can do a lot of this. So um, it's available to most people. And what you wanna do is begin categorizing your actual trades and then tracking your data across different variables going forward. This is just like a must do for, 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 for traders, honestly. You wanna maybe group your trades by mean reversion, breaking news, imbalances, breakouts, and see going forward, like what kind of edge do you have as you progress on these? I think even a popular software that many uh, independent traders use is TraderView that assists with that. Um, so I encourage all traders to really constantly forward test their strategies and, and track this data. It's so useful to use it in your weekly, monthly, or annual reviews. And it just real, reveals so much than what we otherwise uh, infer on our own. Another method is simply identifying variables with predictive power. And this might be surprising to people, but this was by far my most utilized method. So what do I mean by this? Really what I mean is I developed a lens for how stocks move based on an assortment of variables. So the more in favor across multiple variables and timeframes, the assumption was the greater my edge was gonna be. What do I mean by all this? So let me give you a basketball analogy. It's probably a pretty safe assumption that tall basketball players on average are better than short ones, right? And dex dexterous basketball players are better than clumsy ones. A higher vertical jump is better than not having a high jump. Faster is better than slower. So I don't need to get 100 data points to know that if there's some draft that I'm going into blind, I would way prefer the tall, dexterous, fast, high jumping basketball player than the opposite, right? Um, you wanna draft that dude immediately because you know that all these variables on their own have predictive value. If you combine them, generally it all works out pretty well in the aggregate. Bring this to trading world. What I mean by this is I know that stocks with fresh news on them tend to have more continuation than mean reversion. Boring stocks are likely to mean revert better than volatile ones. The more volume, uh, the higher probability of a breakout working. The more time frames that align, the higher probability of a trade working. So if I have breaking news and a wonderful uh, breakout with huge volume in a volatile stock with a lot of time frames aligning, I know that my odds are really, really stacked in my favor. And that's what I mean by those, um, those variables with that predictive power. So I might not have a thousand data points on when there's breaking news and it's consolidated and it's this type of stock and it's these types of time frames uh, and the chart looks like this and the volume looks like this. So without back testing or even forward testing, because of my, that system, I'm gonna take that trade. To give you a very simple example, let's say the market sells off 30% in three days, no meaningful news. That's an insane example. Any trader on earth would be looking for a bounce and buying. And this really doesn't have any common precedence. Everyone intuitively kind of has a subconscious sense though, that those variables are gonna to lead to the likelihood of a bounce. At no point do we know the true expected value because again, there's just not that many data points. So a lot of this can kind of be grouped as experience, intuition, or pattern recognition. What I'm really saying is you don't need to know all the data for how many people in the past might carry an umbrella when it rains, right? I don't need to forward test in the future how often people actually use umbrellas when it rains. From life experiences, I know that rain is a predictive variable for how many people might be carrying an umbrella that day. And it's a very safe assumption. And essentially that's what we're doing here. We're using our experience and identifying these variables to build that system with that predictive power. So then the final method is where you have clearly identifiable structural edge. So what is a structural edge? What that is, is where you have an advantage versus the market due to something um, which really was quite described well uh, by my friend James Chen on Twitter, where he lists four things, access, speed, information, and analytics. So to give you an example of access, some people might have access to different markets, to different third-party locates, uh, to IPO allocations, to cheap borrow rates, uh, the ability to trade ADRs, futures, all different things uh, which provide you an edge versus the market. The other thing is speed. If you're a professional trader, you might have all the best news sources. You might have all the best um, hotkeys. You might have all these different internet lines that allow you faster access to execute versus the market. And another one is information. This could be 
uh, proprietary data sources. This could be expensive news sources, or this could just be analyst access or how you yourself are able to interpret this. A lot of news can be quite complex. And the other thing is analytics, which is really taking all that information from those news sources and applying it in a separate way from the market. Part of the beauty of what makes a market is there's all these different opinions. But if you have proven yourself to have superior analytical skills over time, that's a key edge. And of course, there's a lot of misfits. So this is a very good overview. And now let's kind of break that down further. If you have news faster than anyone else, if it's clearly good, unpriced news, like maybe a stock's at $10 and it's gonna be bought out for $15. You don't need to back test or forward test this. I'm just gonna be buying while you run that back test, right? And now let's say you have expert analysis that's different from the market. There's some traders out there that are really, really exceptional at trading earnings. They know what the important metrics are. They know what the market's looking for. And I also know traders that are experts at biotech. They've put in the time to know about the FDA clinical trials. They know what the data is gonna be good and what the analysts are looking for. All of that is examples of edge. Similarly, I've known traders that are able to get access to IPO allocations and hot names. One final thing which people might underestimate is just simply staying power when others aren't necessarily well capitalized. This was huge during the great financial crisis and even during COVID. There were ETFs that were trading at huge discounts to NAV during some of the COVID disconnects. And guess what? If you're trying to backtest that, there's not many precedents when you have stuff like GDX and GDXJ diverging from their NAV by like 10% or so. But guess what? Even without those, you can bet I was buying those ETFs because I knew that due to just prop firm capital, I had staying power to make these trades and hold on and capitalize. So how do I know if the issue is the market or me? Again, this is the really, really, really tough one, but I'm gonna try and guide you with some thoughts. So first, if you're losing money consistently or underperforming, the buck always stops with you. Regardless, you always wanna be taking full accountability. And I would say 99 out of 100 times, the issue is that the trader hasn't adapted as opposed to the trader simply being on a run of truly bad luck. The most common source of struggle for a strong trader tends to be they aren't being selective enough or they're fighting the trend. So I always try and gut check myself in those situations and ask those questions. Yes, markets can change, but it's ultimately your job to adapt with them. So even if the market is changing, the accountability is on you to make that adaptation with it. If your trades usually work 80% of the time and you're running into a streak of 20% win rates, you want to size down and assess. So what are some key questions to ask? Am I only trading my playbook and staying selective to the setups that meet all my criteria? Of these setups, am I sticking to the really in-play names? And if all of those are true, am I executing properly based on my system? Is there any bias or market regime change that I might be missing? For example, in 22, we entered a bear market of lower lows and lower highs. The regime had clearly changed, and if you were still running long momentum, you were gonna run into trouble. So if you ask yourself all those questions and the above checks out, odds are it's that the market's changed, but nevertheless, you still wanna size down or cut out the plays. But keep tracking the strategy to identify when it might come back. So how do I know when to adapt? Most importantly, weigh the most recent data most heavily. And that's what I think people really fall victim of. They might have all this historical data of having an 80% win rate a year ago or over the last two years, but if you're going four for five losses right now, most recently, you want to really change that and start to make a change. So I highly recommend creating rules for sizing down as well as rules for when you then wanna size back up. Also possible to be aware of what indicators might predict when to size down or when that market might be changing. A lot of guys at SMB have rules for when the VIX is at certain levels. In a more volatile market, you can get away with certain strategies that in a less volatile market, you can't. Additionally, what are the recent market themes? Are things tending to mean revert really well? Are breakouts really working? What's the volume like in this market? And what's the recent performance of you versus traders around you? All these are really good indicators to know whether to push or pull back. But there's no perfect answer that you can act with certainty. Markets are always a game of uncertainty and there's no way around that. You need to accept it. One good way to make sure that you're adapting though is to utilize weekly and monthly reviews. You wanna stay proactive and catch what might be becoming less and less or more and more in play over time. Do those review calls with your pod and all these will help you adapt and keep a pulse over a greater sample of traders. And finally, I'd like to dispel some misinformation. A lot of people were saying online that backtesting is the only way to find out if you have edge. 
A fun fact for you all is I've actually never backtested any of my most important strategies. I don't need to, and it's hard because there's not necessarily good analogies, right? Every play has their nuances. And really, I mostly rely on my system of these variables that I was discussing to know whether a play is good or not. And that lens kind of gets honed over time based on the market we're in. Another thing people say is that you need to quantify your edge for every trade you take. Again, that's just absolutely not true. There's so many times where you really can't quantify anything. People forget that there's this huge probability spectrum for practically every trade. Some things might be binary, but really most aren't. It's really hard to say um, with, with what probability something's gonna win or lose, and those odds are changing anyways. And finally, there's a common saying that you need to have like 3x reward based off of your risk or maybe 4x or whatever that person's magic number was. And this would always be one of my favorite interview questions to ask candidates because it's just a, such a silly trap. Expected value isn't about a certain ratio of reward to risk. It's also integral that you have the probabilities on your side. I'm happy to make 10% uh, of my risk if I'm winning 99.9 .9 out of 100 times, right? That's a no-brainer. Uh, but still, despite that basic math and that basic logic, a lot of people fall victim to that. And another thing is so many people on Fintwit say reading the tape is dead. And I would 100% disagree with that. Reading the tape was a huge structural part of my edge. I had quantifiable edge doing this. It was a skill that came from thousands of hours of tape reading and allowed me to make scalps. It allowed me to hold my winners longer and allowed me to know when to bail early. I'd say reading the tape was probably 10% of the inputs on many of my trades. This was kind of the next step in dissecting this topic further. Developing trading edge is just such a sought after topic and it's been such incredible feedback, but there's a lot to cover. As you can tell, this topic is extremely dense and complex. So I'm gonna keep on building this out over time and keep on trying to address the questions as they come up. Drop the comments below as long as anything you want me to clarify or future directions you want me to take this series with. Keep in mind, this video is a direct response to you all commenting, so I do read these comments and do my best to cover it. So keep it coming and thank you all for watching. Do you wanna learn more actionable trading ideas that you can implement starting tomorrow from Lance? Then watch the video, The Quickest Way to Profitable Trading, Easy Money Trades, appearing on your screen right now.